Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Agora Studio Visit, a virtual tour of our artist studios. We're your hosts. I am Andra, the social media coordinator at Agora Gallery, together with Sabrina, the director of marketing and PR. In today's episode, we're going to learn more about pyrography from one of our represented artists. We're so excited to be joined today by our former colleague and expert in social media and communication, um, Chiara Motoroli. So she'll be helping us to translate and also uh, chiming in on our conversation with Carlo, which we're so excited about. Uh, so hi, Carlo. Hi, <laughs> it's good to see you in your space. Um, we'd love to hear a little bit about your work. If you want to kick it off and give us an intro, um, a little background about your, your practice and what you're currently working on, that would be great. Perfetto, sì. Allora, dunque, eh, mi chiamo Carlo, vivo in Italia e sono un artista della pirografia, l'arte di disegnare utilizzando una penna dalla punta incandescente. Lo strumento è questo, è eh, una penna composta da eh, una punta co collegata ad una penna, la quale arroventando, arroventandosi incide e scrive sul legno o qualsiasi altra materia combustibile. Uh, so he's saying that his work is, uh, um, is, is called pyrography and is done with this pen that with uh, fire basically gets warm and it gets uh, very, very, it's like, it's like basically drawing with fire and that was the pen that he uses and he showed it to the camera before. He's been um, practicing basically this form of art since he's 11 because when he was 11 years old, he had a dream. And in his dream, he was actually uh, fusing something and he could smell the, the, the smell of the wood that was burning. And so that technique was in his head up until his studies, when he studied art in uh, university later on in his life. When he was in university, he received as a gift this pyrography tool, which is the pen, the pen that he showed before. Mm -hmm. And within one week, he produced 50 artworks, 5-0, but wow. only uh, the first 14, 14, one four, um, sent him a message and he really felt the connection um, at that moment. Yeah. Like an energy, like it was coming out of, of the work. Right. So from that moment on, he basically started reading everything possible, all the literature that was talking about the art of pyrography. And um, he's saying that what he found is that this type of art was considered a minor, a minor art. So um, he kept working and he always wanted to elevate this form of art into a contemporary um, understanding so to put it like as a more as a contemporary form of art and uh, later on to close this type of circle that started when he started searching and researching about it he wrote a book himself and uh, that's the moment where he finally thought that he put he did put his work his type of work as a contemporary art form. Uh, he never found uh, any issues working with this technique or with you know, in his art, he always wanted to um, get past himself almost because what he said is that he always wanted to transfer himself, not what maybe other people see or what, you know, what is what is shown, but really what it is. During this lockdown, uh, during the quarantine, uh, he hasn't been producing artworks because he's been focusing on reading, um, thinking that this reading will produce some, it's like seeds that will produce something else later on. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Um, it's so nice to see your studio space and to see your works, um, which we all love so much. Uh, and to hear what how it all began for you when, at such a young age. Um, I know that this technique has been a, around, even though it's like you said, it's a it's a more minor art form and it's lesser known, um, but it's been around for centuries as I understand it. So when you started working in this medium, were you looking to um, 
you know, past masters of this work or was this, were you figuring it out as you went along? I'm just curious as to how your practice took off in that direction, aside from what inspired you to work with wood. So he's saying that actually when he started researching about these, all he could find was um, where kind of not really artworks, but uh, drawings of animals or landscapes, but mainly for uh, furniture purposes, meaning that, you know, things to put uh -huh. in your in your home. Uh, right. uh, so they weren't very sti stimulating for him or challenging. So he basically said that um, it was very easy for him to to start free yeah. from to from make anything it because own. there wasn't that much around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a two part question. What sort of wood do you use? Is there a specific kind um, that you choose? And do you do anything to prepare your material beforehand? Um, if you want to, I know you're going to give us a demonstration, but I'm curious as to what you do in advance to prepare the work before you start uh, using the tool to, to make the work. I uh, said he's using plywood. And this choice is because it's very type of, it's tender and it's also light. So uh, it's convenient and cost effective when shipping work all over the world for his exhibitions. And it does not uh, prepare or pre, um, pre-work the, the wood because uh -huh. it would change the, the effect on, on the fire on it. I see. And then when you incorporate the color, that's your painting after you 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 burn the the drawing in. Is that right? Mm -hmm. He uses watercolors. They're faster and they're they're his favorites. Well, would you like to give us your tour now and show us around your studio? Chiara, io in realtà ho sistemato alcune opere. Non è proprio il mio studio, però posso farvi vedere quello che proseguo in questo momento. Yeah, he's not really a studio, but he did play some works in uh, this space for us to see. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, Carlo, I know that you said that you haven't been producing as much work um, since you've been uh, on lockdown, as everyone has. When you do normally work in your studio space, do you, you have a separate space that you go to? So he has to work on the open air, I mean, outside, outdoors, also because it could be dangerous otherwise. So he said he's very, he has another apartment and he has a big terrace of 300 square meters where he usually works. That's why his Got studio is, is like kind of outdoor. Outside, yeah. I'm sure you're excited to be getting back to it then because as I understand it, you guys are, Italy is sort of coming out of your two month long lockdown. So hopefully you'll be able to get back over there and outside soon. In the other apartment, he has over 300 artworks and they're very large. Some of them are over six meters. But he was also saying that he actually, he, he bought the ticket for New York and so far he has it and he didn't you know, cancel his plan. So he's yes. hoping to still be able to make it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, as are we, hopefully everyone's in the same boat, taking things day by day and hoping for everything to normalize again soon. He will uh, show us a demonstration. Uh, his technique and this technique is very fascinating, but it's also a very slow process. Um, so he will show us a little decorative part of a bigger thing. Perfect. It's interesting without gloves. 
Senza i guanti. No gloves. Living on the right. edge, no scared of burning. <laughs> right. And also through through the wood. But I guess is that a metal yeah. table or so yeah, he's not scared that it goes through because um the the uh, the deepness of the um, the sign is based on the intensity that he that he decides mm -hmm. the pen to have and also from temperature. So mm -hmm. it is both things. So does he use one tool essentially? Or are there different tools that he uses? Um, or Carlo, are there different tools that you use to make different depths and different values? Utilizzo diversi strumenti con potenze e punte differenti. He has different ones with different um, bits mm -hmm. and different intensity. Do you, when you make your larger works, do you draw, do you lay the drawing down first? But it depends. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes, yes. Can I ask a question? I have a question. <laughs> of course. Because <laughs> I, I want to know if through the years he met any other artists mm. that, that do what he does or he feel like one of many, many, many. Tutto è stato pensato. Io volevo che um, mi piacerebbe tanto che i più giovani potessero rendere quello che ho fatto più efficace, avendo più simboli in questo modo. Io, uh, queste sono state le mie uh, possibilità e soprattutto le capacità. He said, yes, he's the only one uh, that makes art uh, with this thing and he would really like the younger people who kind of take inspiration or pass on after and make even a better work, a be no better work, better job making this type of um, technique uh, validate, you know, to validate this technique. Mm -hmm. So he's creating two type of signs. Uh, one is more light with watercolor and one is more deep so that he can give different um, intensities to his, his, his work, his images. All right. Well, thank you so much. Andra, did you have some um, questions that you wanted to ask Carlo as well? Yeah, actually, I have a couple of sentences that I will ask him to continue for me. Uh, so, Carlo, if you had one superpower, that power would be? Kara. If what? Fire. <laughs> okay, <laughs> obviously, yes. from his own fingers. Exactly. Ah. Uh, if you could go back in time to be the apprentice of a very famous artist, that artist would be? Escher. I don't need to put that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and if he has any advice for the artists watching us? Sì, mi piacerebbe tanto eh, che ognuno di noi sapesse riconoscere la propria identità e non seguire sempre le regole. Molto spesso sono quelle che mandano fuori strada. You would really like that each one of us would uh, find their own identity and not just um, follow outside rules because sometimes, most of the times, the outside rules is what brings you out of your own path all right okay thank you yeah thank you so much and clearly you have done that and your work is um truly inspired i like hearing your story of how this has been something that's been inside of you at, from such a young age and it's evolved just beautifully even since the last time we showed your work at agora um i we love looking at the new pieces that you've come out with, especially with the colors. And I think 
um, we're very excited to see them in person again. He's also very mm -hmm. happy also because he could uh, he can express himself. It was a very good opportunity. It's so nice to speak with you and to see you again, Carlo, and to, to understand a little bit more about your process, which is so unique. So thank you for that. Grazie, grazie mille a voi per l'opportunità. Thank you for showing us your works and for welcoming us into your studio. It's been um, an educational and unique experience, so I'm sure our viewers will also enjoy it. And uh, we look forward to having your work at the gallery soon, we hope. <laughs> Ciao. 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 Ciao.